is a picture of a Shanghai in a smoggy day. This kind of situation is not uncommon in China nowadays. Uh, fossil energy is the main source of energy in China, but on the other hand, it also leads to serious environmental problems. The demand of energy will be growing for the next two decades. The ultimate clean energy is renewables, but then it will not be enough in the next 20 years for our economy, for our societal de development. Natural gas, as a, as a cleaner form of fossil fuel, will fill the gap, which serve, we will, will serve as a bridge from coal to renewables. The burning of natural gas will produ produce emits less pollutants, such as carbon dioxide, NOx, SOx, and other dust. Natural gas can be used for heating, power generation, chemical manufacturing, and also for transportation. So in China, natural gas only accounts for 6%, actually less than 6% of total energy consumption. But the demand is growing. The gap between demand and production will be uh, enlarging for the next 20 years. On the other hand, in the US, the situation is different because of the shale gas revolution. Here shows two basins with similar areas, similar geology, but the productivity is very different. In the US, this year, the production is, about, is over 200 billion cubic meters. In China, we project to produce 6.5 billion cubic meters of gas. So what's the reason? The reason is technology. Here shows two technologies, horizontal drilling and multi-stage fracturing. These two technology constitute the technology needed for shale gas revolution in the US. China is trying to catch up, trying to reproduce the success of shale gas development in the, U in the US. So in order to study the fundamentals of shale gas production in the subsurface, we uh, launched uh, several large-scale projects from nanoscale to microscopic to millimeter to the field scale. So we started the gas in nanopores. This shows the simulation we did with molecular dynamics. Uh, starting the flow and then the nanopore diffusion, desorption, and sorption at this fundamental scale. Then we upscale to macroscopic scale, then compare with the theoretical model we come up uh, in, our, in our lab. We mentioned hydraulic fracturing. These are the two we generated to simulate the happening, occurring, and propagation of hydraulic fractures. Here shows the size of the fractures with time. The size of fracture indicates the, the zones good for uh, shale gas production. Using the same tool, we can, we can look at the different designs of hydraulic fracturing. So as you can see, with the different distance between the cluster of perforation, you lead to different performance of a fracture zone, then also lead to different productivity. In the fractures, we also inject propanes, which, which are the solid particles inject along with fluids, used to open up the fractures created to enhance permeability, which is the ability for gas to flow in the subsurface. So we have detailed study showing the flow and distribution of propanes. Uh, we developed advanced mathematical and numerical simulator to study the flow in the subsurface. Here simulate the, the situation in the US in the, in the gas field. We can use the same simulator to simulate what's happening in Sichuan Basin, which is the key uh, basin in China. Uh, during uh, shale gas production, the world is an important issue. There are several water-related procedures, like acquisition of water, uh, chemical mixing, injection, uh, treatment, and disposal of water. There are re environmental risks so associated with any of these procedures. So we have to be really careful. Uh, in the US, production of shale gas did not cause much environmental problems. In, at a state level, the use of water is pretty small, less than 1%. But in China, the shale gas plays are uh, distributed in the areas uh, with water scarcity. So the water issue could be important. OK, let me summarize. For the next two decades, the demand of energy will be, gro will be growing. Renewables are not enough. So shale gas, in general, natural gas, serve as a bridge from coal to renewables. The question to the audience is, how can we produce shale gas in, 
in an environmentally friendly way. How can we reproduce the success of the U.S. shale gas revolution in China and other countries? Thank you.